I gotta tell you, here at SciShow News, we love ourselves some Elon Musk. From his pioneering private spacecraft with SpaceX to his daring, high-speed, people-moving tube idea known as the Hyperloop, Musk is a wellspring of awesome ideas. He's the closest thing we have to an actual Tony Stark. And he seems more determined than anyone to bring our world a little bit closer to science fiction every day. Now, his latest venture announced February 26th aims to change how we power our world. In less than 10 years, he says he wants to build the world's largest battery factory, which, you know, to get more press, he's named the Gigafactory. He hasn't yet picked a site for it, but the five billion dollar facility will probably be built somewhere in the southwestern U.S., where by 2020 it will be churning out lithium-ion batteries at the rate of 35 billion watt-hours a year. Since the battery is pretty much the most expensive part of electric cars, mass-producing lithium-ion cells will not only allow Musk to sell his Tesla cars more cheap, but it could also drive down prices for mobile devices and for storing energy generated at home, like from wind and solar. To that end, since making batteries requires enormous amounts of energy, he also said that his plant will be at least partly powered by renewable sources. So, why is everybody so charged up about the Gigafactory? Well, lithium-ion batteries are a hot commodity because lithium is a highly reactive element that can be used to store lots of energy. It's what you're using right now to power your laptop, tablet, and phone. The teleprompter I'm reading off of is power by lithium-ion batteries. And all batteries work by transferring energy from a negative electrode that gives up electrons to a positive electrode that wants them. Those electrons are transported by way of ions in a medium called an electrolyte. The thing about lithium batteries is that the reactions going on inside them can actually be reversed, which means that the batteries are easily rechargeable. So not only can lithium ions move from the negative side to the positive side of a battery when you're using your phone, but when the battery cell is plugged into a power source, those ions can move back, effectively recharging the supply of the negative side. There are some downsides to the technology, though, particularly the electrolyte. In lithium-ion batteries, the substance that works best is ether, which you may associate with anesthetizing people in old movies or cartoons, but an ether molecule is really just two hydrocarbons connected by an oxygen atom. And it is crazy combustible, so if a battery shorts out or gets too hot, the ether can ignite, which is kind of dangerous. So some researchers, reportedly including those on Team Musk, are experimenting with alternative electrolytes like lithium imide, a non-combustible inorganic compound, or plain old wax to replace the ether. But so far, nothing works as well. And while we don't know exactly what's up Musk's sleeve, we do know that he's filed a patent for a so-called lithium air battery pack, which uses a lithium ion battery connected to another battery cell that uses oxygen in the air as the negative electrode for an extra boost. All I can say is more power to you, Elon. You'll always be one of our favorite innovators, at least until Obama makes good on his promise to build Iron Man. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News, especially to our subable subscribers. Would you like your very own customized SciShow lab coat? Or how about seeing your name on one of our graphics? To find out about these and other perks, go to subable.com slash scishow so you can help us keep existing. And if you have a question or a comment, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and down in the comments below. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow to subscribe.